It's time for a long overdue introduction to the car on the trailer. It's been in the background on a number of videos and um, I never really said what it was or what my plans were for it. This car started out as a Moonraker Blue 1985 or 86 Twin Plenum Vitesse. So back in the day, it would have been a really desirable car. The other thing about this one is it has air conditioning. So apart from cruise control, which it doesn't have, it's the top of the range car. Um, you couldn't really get any better than that, apart from maybe a Vandenplast EFI, but you know, you could never get those with the twin plenum engines. <clears throat> it's only, well, I say only, it's showing 96,000 miles, but you can see it's not in the best of condition. Um, this car, I have a habit of wanting to save everything. The car had been with another real SD1 enthusiast. I won't say his name, but... Um, he is like the man who knows absolutely everything about the SD1 race cars and he'd had a collection of twin plenums because he's a big fan of the road cars as well I think I don't know him that well but um, he kept this I don't know where he got it from or what state he got it he had a bit of a clear out and he sold it to another one of my friends up north well not north north from when you live in the southeast um, he had it and was intending to restore it, but he had other things that he needed to get done as well. So he was gonna shift it on. Unfortunately, um, the most logical way of shifting on a car like this is to break it because there aren't many people who would wanna take on a project like that, despite twin plenum prices going up and these cars being rare. The bits that were on this car that would have been worth good money were already mes uh, missing, which is the twin plenum inlet manifold. <coughs> I'll show you one of those in a minute. But basically, you can see the car is now still got its engine in, um, but it's missing the twin plenum intake. But that's not a big issue because I've got a few of those. Um, and it's now missing the uh, sorry the gearbox, the prop shaft, the selector, the manual pedal box because um, my mate wanted to keep those bits for converting one of his auto cars to manual. So basically it's been passed around quite a lot and bits and pieces have gone missing until the point where logically the only thing that was worth any money was the vehicle as a completed car itself or the remains of that engine because um, that engine is a twin plenum engine it's still got its adjustable rocker gear bits and pieces like that so um, that's the backstory now in terms of condition somebody has started to try and restore it they've painted bits of it in targa red which was a vitesse color but my preference is always to keep original colours, even if you don't like them, I just think it, it's better for the car. They've made some slightly strange repair choices. Uh, so this wing has been repaired, but I think I showed this in one of the other videos when I was doing the wheel arch lip on Dotty. It's an over patch part. They've put it over the original. They've never cut the original off. You can still feel that in there. Or if they have, they've only chopped a tiny bit of it off. Then they've just hammered it round. So when the door was on, the door was actually sitting outboard of here, which was never going to work, really. I think it had an LPG at some point, and that would have been where the filler went through. That's not the only bad repair, by the way. Most of the boot floor and... Um, the rear of the car under here it looks really solid until you realize what they've done is they've used roof flashing tape the aluminium backed stuff to cover up all the rot 
and then they've just under sealed over the top of it so it looks really nice and then when you peel the patch off you're left with that which is really really annoying because some of the photos of this car before i um decided to take it on made it look really good when in point of fact this boot floor's probably had it <coughs> it's not as bad as the diesel was or um, some of the other cars but it ain't great other annoying things somebody at some point has tried either towing it or pushing it i think they tried towing it and they basically distorted the whole of the rear lamp panel and then pushed it back in and we've ended up with like quite a distinctive crease and fold there it should look like that now it looks like that so that all wants to come out and go in the bin uh the boot spoiler has had it as well it's all split over this side we had another bodged repair and it, this is where it gets strange the wheel arch from about there through to about here is pretty much perfect there's not even that much filler in it there's some filler down here but it wasn't bad but rather than repair it properly they just gobbed that skin on top and then i've cut it off i don't know why it's just odd that door's had a bang that's knackered this side it's had a whole new sill fitted all the way along i think this might have been done by somebody else because they've done it the proper way so they've unpicked the sill from behind the b pillar and the base of the c pillar and actually slotted it up and inside which is what you're meant to do uh, to get it as close to factory as possible and that doesn't fit with how the rest of the car has been done um, they've also painted over the identity plate which is really annoying the bottom of the b pillar is just riveted on and then slapped badly with filler they've obviously had some alignment issues because they've hammered that down so yeah you're starting to build a picture as am i of just how lashed up this thing is then quite possibly one of my favorite features of this car is the fit of this front wing that is a welded part on welds along the top and around the wheel arch lip they've never bothered welding the wheel arch lip so there's just a big gap all the way around which is really really stupid the wing fits horribly and then I don't think it was ever finished that's just another riveted or badly welded repair so you can see that there's a lot to do on this car you might think why the hell are you even bothering um, and really it's basically being saved at this stage I've got so many other things to do first that I don't know that this will get in the line anytime soon but when you actually start looking at the actual structure of the car on a lot of SD1s, all of these rad brackets, these inner wheel welds, they've disintegrated to nothing. This hasn't, it's actually really good. Same with the front panel, that's also really good. This wing doesn't need to be changed. There's a repair down here that's needed, a little bit there, but actually the majority of that wing's really good. Most of this sill is fine. There's a horrible repair up there, which I'll have to unpick off and see how bad it is behind. But I don't actually think that sill needs changing. And although the wheel arch lips are knackered, they're no worse. In fact, they're better than Dotty was. So you can see why this car has potential. And when you look up here, you have a really good roof, a really good sunroof panel that actually fits and no evidence of rust most of the windscreen surround is good tiny bit down there that's not a big deal um so yeah it might look like an utter turd to most people but to me it looks like a genuinely viable project rear spring uh, sorry damper strut tops are fine rear seat pans are good heel boards are good both sides that side the looks like somebody's put a jack on it and there's a hole in the floor floors are pretty solid that bit up there will need a patch that bit will as well <clears throat> but actually key areas aren't so bad battery tray pretty damn good chassis rails are perfect that battery tray just wants to rub down and a clean we've got the normal rust on the strut, strut tops there but those are sort of 
small localised repairs and something to keep an eye on rather than do a full on chop the whole turret out. Um, so I'm going to whip a cam cover off now and show you the why it's called a twin plenum and the rocker gear. Ta da! This is a spare twin plenum top that I had. I think I've got three of them, in fact, and bits and pieces to go with them that I've just picked up over the years. I never buy anything like that I think is expensive because I buy it cheap when it's about and then um, just hoard it for a project. But that means projects probably cost me less than they would other people or if you were trying to do a project in a hurry because I'm not ever hurrying, I'm just flitting between the projects doing the next logical step. But anyway, um, <coughs> on the twin plenum cars you had the same airflow meter as a standard single plenum but after that you had this Y piece which split the air to run through two butterfly throttle bodies which are um, additions to what is a basically standard-ish type of inlet plenum. I don't know why they call it twin plenum because that is the plenum chamber. What you've got is actual twin throttle bodies well not throttle bodies but throttle butterflies anyway um, those are operated off one shaft so they are linked and that's your adjuster to make sure that the butterflies open at the same time this one i'm missing the jack shaft assembly uh, the problem was with the standard car you had the throttle cable come through in fact i'll show you <coughs> i'll show you on the drift car the drift car is slightly different because it's got a range rover v8 3.9 liter and um hot wire injection rather than flapper like an sd1 vitesse would have <coughs> but you'll get the idea so that's what a single plenum looks like Air airflow meter intake plenum throttle cable on this one is running the wrong way around because it's out of a discovery i think i got it but when you pull the throttle cable, it turns the spindle in a linear way so that for every sort of millimeter of travel, you get a set amount of opening of the butterfly. That's different on the twin plenums because as soon as you open the butterfly and the engine starts to get more air, it'll accelerate. And with a conventional throttle pedal, a conventional cable, operating two butterflies you can imagine that if you just touched the accelerator crack both of these would open and the engine would really accelerate and it could be quite lumpy for your average joe driver so it has this weird jack shaft assembly on the end when the throttle cable gets pulled it begins to pull the lever which then turns the spindle a crack and then after it's gone so far the rate at which throttle cable extension will increase throttle butterfly opening rapidly increases so it's just a way for rover to smooth out the initial power delivery um, the other differences on these twin plenum cars <coughs> is the rocker gear on a standard car none of it is adjustable so you have a conventional rover v8 rocker arm with a uh, little cup on this end for the push rod to go into and absolutely no adjustment they don't need adjustment from factory because they have hydraulic tappets or followers which are pressurized which take up the clearances to sort of you know mass production specs on the race engines they wanted to have that controlled because they had solid lifters so that they could rev a lot higher. So on the homologated cars, which is what a twin plenum Vitesse basically is, they had to build them um, to sell to Joe Public with rocker, in, rocker gear in it, and then they were just welded so they couldn't be adjusted. What exactly the race cars were like, I don't know, because I've never seen one, but other people can post up and tell me, and other people if they want to. This engine is not the original engine from this car. The... It was built as a twin plenum car. It came off the production line as one of the later twin plenums. Um, so it wasn't one of the first 50 that was built at Lotus. It was built on the production line. But when you look at the engine number, it starts S30A. 
So the 30A denotes that it's a Vitesse engine, but the S at the front says that, as you can see, it says that it's a factory rebuild. So what probably happened is either the original engine failed in service and under warranty it was replaced, or somebody had big pockets and had it replaced. And when they replace engines, they generally keep, or they, they supply the new block, but they refit your cam and heads and valve gear and everything back into it because that bit probably hasn't failed which is why it still retains its twin plenum setup um you can tell it was always an efi engine because of that engine number and things like it's got an efi water pump on it rather than a carburetor one everything else looks correct it's got the right manifolds and with the original copper nuts on it so i don't think after that you know engine rebuild and install i don't think it's been disturbed massively it's missing its oil cooler, but I think I've got one down in my dad's garage. The other bit that's not fitted to the car that makes up the twin plenum is the trumpet base. So on here, and, and don't worry about things dropping in here because I'll be stripping this engine completely anyway. Um, the trumpet base is wider and has larger trumpets than compared with a standard Vitesse. You can see the additional machining work done to this inlet manifold because you see the throats are opened up a bit there. <clears throat> There's lots of people arguing about how many twin plenum Vitesses there were and Rover never kept a number and they never actually sold a, um, you know, they, they didn't do a big marketing thing like most people would do nowadays. They just let them out the door and people were turning up to the showrooms Vitesses in whatever colour they wanted, not knowing whether it was a twin or a single, which is really, really odd because you could imagine now how much the marketing people would get on board with trying to sell Joe Public a race homologated car for loads more money, like uh, like loads of other manufacturers do, but Rover didn't because they were shit at marketing back then, um, which is probably one of the reasons that they never sort of sold these as the amazing cars that they were. Um, I'm just rambling now. Yeah, there's arguments as to how many twin plenums there were. Some people say it was only 200. Some people say it was 500 on the dot. And I know uh, Chris, the Rover ST1 Club historian, is doing a bit of research. And I think he's found up to about 500, maybe even more than that now. So they're not as amazing rare as people say. And the other thing about these is what power do they make from standard some of the early cars like my other one had different camshafts in them which did make a bit of difference but on the majority of them they make exactly the same power as the standard Vitesse because the e Oops. because I think the ECU is the same the fueling is the same and the airflow meter is the same so there's no real area for that extra power to come from the only other difference is the pickup so because of that throttle body arrangement it does feel a little bit more potent if you floor it because it gets so much more air so much faster so the initial punch is there um, there's other aspects to this twin plenum which actually make it less desirable in some people's eyes these are a pain to set up the problem with them is that you need both to open exactly at the same time which means that this has to be in good condition and the other problem is the throttle linkage is on this, this end and it puts an awful lot of stress on the bushings for the throttle spindle so you can actually wear these out and get air leaks that you don't want this is an incredibly low mileage unmolested perfect inlet and that will be the one that probably goes back on this car once I've found a trumpet base. Um, these bits are all brand new. These are like rocking horse poo to find. They're the original inlet trunks, never been used. That's brand new, never been used. Um, so when it's done, it will be a very nice car. Um, yeah, that's where the original fuel filter is. I've got all of the brackets to hold the twin, in, uh, twin plenum airbox, which is slightly different, I think and the bracket for the airflow meter up here, which is slightly different. I've got a radiator at home. I've got the deep chin spoiler at home, new boot spoiler. I've got all the trim apart from the headlining and I need a rear seat base, I think, and the rear bolsters. Um, I think I've actually got everything to finish the car. I've even got a nice set of wheels. So 
that's a tour of the mystery car um oh yeah that's the other thing i picked up i've actually got a suffix d code 28 a gearbox for this and that's the proper late vitesse gearbox which will be in the twin plenums um lots of other bits of this car have been painted yellow for some reason it's like somebody stripped the front down got happy with the yellow hammer right and then um gave up still got its uh, twin circuit for test brakes which is good i'll probably swap them for jag ones because i've got another set of those at my dad's garage it's got a standard front anti-roll bar nothing special going on there at the back again it looks like somebody's done some of the work which is good for me i think the fuel filler neck is new and then under the back this is the benefit of having a trailer i think the axle has been repainted whether it's been refurbished i don't know all the brake lines at the back are new the watts linkage has been repainted the trailing arms look to have been replaced and they've got poly bushes where they go onto the axle cups um so that's good the axle cups haven't rotted out actually that is a big bodge i've just spotted one side of the axle is poly bushed and the other side isn't why you do that i don't know and it's the same on this side so that's odd uh it's got the twin plenum fuel tank guard um they're not actually rare but they're nice to have you can still buy them new um just checking it's got the right watts linkage can't quite tell without undoing it from its hangers but on the vitesses you should have solid bushes on the outboard ends um but yeah that's a tour of the car Ugh. so i hope that's of interest like i say it's going to be a, a while before i do anything constructive with that priority number one is dotty priority number two is the diesel then um the bubble will just sit and wait for the paint to go hard while i gather up the rest of the bits to do the engine um got an interesting sanded repair over there this is quite funny for me <coughs> but then i have a strange sense of humor when i did the police car i was worried people would think that i'd done some sort of lashed up bodge job i measured all of the distances of these uh, mig stitch welds because it just looks so horrible to the eye and unfinished that is the way all sd ones are done and it carries on through here what it doesn't usually do is go weird there so i don't know what's happened it might have been that there's been some rust developing and they've fixed it i'll really only be able to tell from uh, looking at the underside it doesn't look too bad actually this can rot out on sd ones and that's all good so happy with that yeah i am rambling so i will uh, Get on putting the little Rover 400 back together again now. Just as a very quick follow-up thing, because I can. That is a standard rocker gear setup, or not gear, rocker assembly, versus the twin plenum one. So you can see, I presume the shaft is the same and the pedestals are the same. I don't 100% know. But you can see the difference in the uh, rocker arms themselves i'm told or have read or something makes me think that these parts are actually off a of volvo which volvo it is and whether you're, they're still available i have absolutely no idea what the push rods are off again no idea i'd imagine they are just straight out of the parts bin from some other company but which one i don't know um going on to other reasons why people sometimes moan about twin plenums and say they're not all they're cracked up to be i've put it all away now but i did have the twin intake trunking and one plenum there one plenum there on a road car the air comes in goes through that car alley inlet and then into the plenum there's some people i think it's written in one of the power tune how to power tune a rover v8 engine books or one of those it says that the twin plenums actually feed air uh, to one set of cylinders more than the others and can lean them out of it whether that's true or not i don't know it probably is only going to affect it over massive mileages but just another little um, detail point really